So you just made your first algorithm to check if a number is prime and it probably looks like a little bit something like this. Uh, you check for the trivial by definition cases where it's not a prime, zero, one, and negative numbers. And then you check for every number between two and then minus one. You check if it uh, divides n and then return false if it does because you found a divisor, meaning the number is composite. Otherwise, if you go through all those numbers, and didn't find any uh, that divides the number, you return true. Uh, let's see how long this takes to check if this number is prime, which it is. The number is 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. We know it's a prime, but let's check how long it takes. Uh, this is just a way in, a way in PowerShell to, ch to, to measure how long it takes. Um, and as you can see, it's taking a bit of time. Uh, why is it taking a bit of time? So this is 2 billion, I think, and it's checking every number between 2 and 2 billion uh, and some more uh, to check if uh, it's prime. And that even, f even in a modern computer takes a, a little bit of time. In this case, about 22 seconds. So let's try to improve this. We are checking all the numbers between 2 and n minus 1, and it's fairly obvious that we don't need to check that many. Uh, one, obvious, one obvious optimization we can make is to not check the even numbers, because they would also be divided by 2. So let's make that change. With this change, we can with this change, we are checking just the odd numbers. We're skipping every two numbers and checking the odd numbers. But we also, but we also need to check the the base cases. So let's also do that. So if the number uh, is two, uh, it's a prime. If it otherwise divides two, is divisible by two, uh, it's not a prime. So let's see how long it takes now. Uh, we're doing half the computation, so we kind of expect it to take half the time. Which is the case, most likely. Yeah, here it is, 10 seconds. 10 seconds is still a long time to check this number for primality, and which begs the question, can we do better? And the answer is yes, we can. If you look at it, it's fairly obvious that n minus 2, n minus 4, and numbers that are close to, to n are not going to divide n. And we can kind of intuit that, for example, if we haven't found a divisor by half the number, we're probably not going to find one in the, in the second half. But so we could implement that, and that would cut the, that would cut the time to, to half again. But can we do even better than that? Number theory comes to our aid in this, and there is a result that says that we only have to check until square root of n. Why is that though? The answer is that a composite number cannot have more than one factor above uh, square root of n. And to show you why that is, let's suppose that we have a number that has two factors that are greater than uh, square root of n. So if f1 is greater than square root of n, f2 is greater than square root of n, can n be equal to f1 times f2? The answer is no, and that is because f1 times f2 is greater than square root of n times f square root of n, which in turn is equal to n. So if we have two factors that are greater than square root of n, we arrive at a contradiction which means that there can be at most one factor that, that is square root of n, that is greater than square root of n. And this means we only have to check until square root of n. So let's do that. There are no implicit conversions in the language that I'm using, so I have to, I have to convert the number to float and then back to int uh, to check it. Also, I have to check, uh, I have to make sure that we check the square root of n uh, in case the number is uh, perfect square. So let's see how fast this is. And that's much faster. Um, 
actually most of this time is due to is due to uh, loading the, the program the first time if we run it again it's even faster at around 20 milliseconds there is still another thing we can do as you can see we are doing a lot of work in every iteration of converting n to float and then doing a square root which is a pretty heavy operation and then converting it back to int uh, one thing we can do is we can square both sides of this inequality And we get the simple expression on how to check if a number is a prime number. Just to put things into perspective, let's check how our improvement uh, reduced the number of computation needed. In our first algorithm, we had to do about as many divisions as the number that we're checking. In the second iteration of our algorithm, we had to check half as many as the number we are checking. In our last algorithm, we have to make as many divisions as the as half of the square root of the number we are checking. In this case, it's around 23,000 uh, numbers. If we put these numbers side by side, you can see how much of a difference it makes. It's half the, it has the half the number of digits as the other as the number we're checking which is why this approach is so fast for relatively small prime numbers.